And while looking at the figures here, we've got total mineral production rising 9.6% compared with the same month a year earlier, but gold output falling back 5.8%. And from the looks of it, if you're looking at these headline figures, some would say not entirely surprising. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously been a... I guess, you know, industry that's been hampered with va various issues during the period, you know, they've got grade issues at, 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 at various mines, um, you know, the safety issues uh, is a problem we've seen in the last two week, two fatalities actually at, at, at Harmony mm -hmm. um, Gold Mine. So, um, you know, it's tough going for these guys. Uh, of course, sir, we've also had City come to the fore with a report yesterday just highlighting the uh, the cost pressures that plague. And we've got cost pressures coming through from a possible, uh, possibly higher wage negotiation settlements uh, coming to the fore. Uh, as you say, higher investments needing to be made in safety as well. And uh, just basic administrative prices like uh, electricity costs. So how do you see this uh, squeezing margins from here on out? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the first quarter um, uh, uh, unit cost numbers, I mean they were up around about 15% uh, across the industry, you know, and, and that's on the back of, of, of the increases we've already seen last year in, in 2010 mm -hmm. over 20, 2009, which was almost double of what we've seen from the other global players. So there is a big problem in that category and, and you know, all these other things, um, you know, demands that we are seeing for, for, for labor rates closer to 10%, even north of that, is definitely putting pressure on these guys. Unfortunately, um, they are not able to capitalize on the strong gold price that we've seen with the cost pressures pushing up. How are you pegging the state of the gold mining industry right now? Because, of course, concern uh, is around the fact that, you know, to get gold, we're going to have to be going deeper. And in some instances, it's uh, proving to be less viable the further down the line we move. Yes, it is. And I mean, it's, it's, you know, if you look at the stats and you go back to 1980, I think our gold output relative to the rest of the world has so, sort of been um, a third now of what it was then. You know, um, it's, it, we, we're definitely not the dominant player anymore in, in, in the market. Um, you know, most of these guys, and, and, and especially the, the top three big gold companies, Omni Goldfields and Anglo Gold, are all trying to diversify their portfolio in mines outside of South Africa. A lot of them uh, are going into Africa. Um, Omni obviously got a, got a big project in uh, Papua New Guinea, the, the Wafi Gold pro project. So you're seeing many of these guys trying to diversify away from South Africa. I think it is a, it, unfortunately it's an industry that are structurally flawed. They've got various issues um, and you need very high gold prices for, for these guys to make their operations viable. Of course, so there's a distinction to be made between the various miners within the mining sector as a whole because we've had our coal producers, for example, doing a pretty well uh, ramping up uh, supply and uh, catering to that eastern demand that we're seeing filter through, especially at a time where you've got players like Rio, like BHP, seeing their production numbers come down after the natural disasters that uh, were experienced over in Australia. Yeah, and I, and I think you, you've seen it, you know, across iron ore, copper, all of these things, you are seeing uh, supply uh, issues, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the companies are coming back and sort of revise their supply forecasts down. Um, gold is no difference, you know, I think we're seeing some countries that are producing very strongly, like uh, China, and as I mentioned, some of the other countries in Africa, maybe this, uh, in, in, in uh, um, uh, Brazil, yeah. you know, in, in that area, uh, Southern America, but it, in, in general, it is a, it is an industry also that are that are faced with the same issues. I think compared it to, to, to to coal mining, you know, it's I think it's a lot more complex and and and, and there's a lot more uh, risk to to you know for your production to disappoint on the downside, mm -hmm. and just merely by the nature of of, 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 of of their operations. And yet within these very difficult and trying circumstances, we've got a cause for nationalization from the ANC Youth League becoming louder and louder. At the same time, the gold companies themselves also are becoming a lot more vocal on their positions. We had Anglo Gold Ashanti's chief executive, Marco Tufani, this week uh, really coming out uh, forcefully in terms of his position on uh, nationalization. What are you making of that debate? that just seems to be raging on no matter what. It's all about investor confidence, you know, and I think, you know, unfortunately, whether we want to believe it or not, um, in a lot of these, and, and in the precious metal space, I think in general, the offshore shareholders are the, are, are the main people that are actually um, driving shares up and down. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, all this negative publicity is definitely not good for the mines. You know, um, 
I guess, coupled with all the other issues that, th that they've got on the ground, they, they um, would like to tell a story to foreign investors that, uh, that they can sell. And I think, you know, with these type of news bits coming across the, the wire, it's, it's, it's difficult for them, Barry. Uh, at the same time, we've had uh, Marco Tufani saying he's not entirely against a state-owned mining company. There's support for that uh, coming to the fore to a large extent. What's your view uh, on the viability of a state mining company at this So has the peak of the super cycle for the industry been hit already? Yeah, I think it, it depends on what commodities you talk about. Yeah. You know, I think well, gold specifically. Gold specifically, I think um, I think it's it's it, it's got more legs to go. You know, I think of the macro data that we've seen in the last week. You know, um, the various issue in the U.S. Um, I think negative real rates are here. For, 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 for some time, I don't think they, they're going to turn up very quickly. And, and all these type of things will be very good for gold. Um, we've also seen, obviously, the, the issues in, 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 in peripheral Europe coming out, Italy in the last week as well. Um, and there's a clear co uh, correlation between uh, the spreads of those bonds over the U.S. Treasury uh, relative to the gold price. I don't think there is a sustainable, quick solution for the debt issue in Europe. Um, America as well, I think they've got a lot of work ahead of them. And, and this environment is, is, is good for dollar gold price. And, for, uh, and that uh, proving to be a nice incentive for now.